Hello, friends. Welcome to Sports Talk with B. Watts Entertainment. I'm your host, Bernard Watts, and we're getting ready to start our show tonight, along with my co-host, Greg Said. We're going to be talking about the transfer portal. Are you going to dip or are you going to ride? And we're going to focus on Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffalo tonight. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. If you don't mind, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the videos with your friends. And also put a comment in the comment section if you don't mind. What's up, Greg? What's going on? How you doing, sir? It's moving right along. It's moving right along. All right, man. Check this out, brother. Uh, got a lot of movement that transfer portal has opened up for college football and not only have Colorado lost some players in the transfer portal, you got Georgia, you got Alabama, you got LSU, you got Miami, Ohio State, all college programs lost some key players and some players that didn't make the first team or the second team so far in the spring practice game and they hit the transfer portal for their own specific reason. But uh, mainly, uh, it's some players on Colorado that shocked me that hit the transfer portal. People like Savion Washington, uh, David Connor also shocked me. I didn't know he was going to hit the transfer portal. And also, Kamada McClain and the running back, Alton McCaskey. But I still got hope. I still got faith in Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes that they will bring in some players that can add more depth to what they have lost from the transfer portal to make this team better. So I'm going to start off by asking you, uh, what was your surprise of the transfer transfer portal from Colorado this year? Well, I, mean, I may have missed Connor. I, I mean, but I know they say he's been out on leave or whatever, and he may be coming back. And what we've been seeing a pattern is when people disappear for a period of time and come back, it seems like they're on the way out, whether it was, it was an injury or just, you know, some weird, you know, circumstances. I know Kamani has been weird since he came. I mean, it was weird him coming from, <laughs> yeah, from yeah. the whole Miami situation, him disappearing, playing high go seat from them to come to Boulder. And it's just been a, a weird and he got here and people trying to figure out was he going to practice and then he got out there, he was throwing up, and he said he got here late, he started late, and all that good stuff. And then he didn't play. And it's just it's just been a lot of it's it just been a lot of instability when it comes to him. So yeah. But uh yeah. stay right there on that uh stay right there on Tomati. But uh by them losing another cornerback. Now for depth wise, I know we got TJ McKinnon and Preston Hodge. That transfer in. And we got Travis Hunter also. And also we got Omarion Cooper, if they have to, moving back from safety to cornerback. Now, since Kamada have been there, the uh now I'm not trying to slander him or put him down or no kind of way. It just seemed like there's always something was going on with him, just like you just said a while ago. And I think Coach Prime just I think he just got fed up. He just got tired. Maybe he see that Kamani McClain didn't have nothing to offer him, and they probably didn't have nothing to help him grow or offer him to make him want to come to practice or whatever went on. It seemed like it just didn't work between those two. But I wish him the best. I knew it was going to be something interesting with Kamani because of how he, he kind of had like a nonchalant attitude. And – a lot of you know it didn't fit you really think about who coach prime brain and usually like you know they can speak for themselves their confidence and he just always been like uh, you know and i don't want to be in front of the camera so i knew that was going to be a weird situation but um i don't know i think you know we got some two and i know at least two cornerbacks are already coming i know they oh you do the we do yeah, I mean, they got they got. I know, I know Cam McHale. He play a little. Cam McHale play a little cornerback. They got a couple. They got one boy from Florida. Um, 
and they all big size dudes. They all big okay. cornerback. And also, I know they was trying to instigate him to get this guy. What is it, Whippy? Something like that. That was just a little Twitter thing. Or, mm -hmm. um, but he's a big size guy. They say he. And uh, I know I was watching another channel. What is it, Bump and Prime? They was trying to, you know, hype up this guy. And it's like he's the only guy that can do stuff like what Travis Hunter's doing. So and they show his okay. fam and all that. So they're trying to instigate him to get. So he probably have two, three more cornerbacks come in anyway. Right. And I don't know if that was knowing that Kamani might leave uh, regardless. But I know it's two, three more coming younger guys. I know one is a freshman. And um, as a matter of fact, I think it's two freshman cornerbacks coming in. And, okay. and, and they, like I said, they're all big size guys, about his size. And even bigger, uh, far as weight, but they're young too. But I don't, I don't know what the loss is with him because, like you said, he never really reached his potential. He never really right had the growth and whatever was going in and out or whatever was going on. It wasn't showing anything. I, and I, skill wise, I don't know. Some people say he really is like a three star cornerback. I don't know what he was doing, but yeah, he's not really that comfortable in his coverage, in his, in his back paddling, and his breaks. How he how, how, even how narrow he has his feet when he backpedals. His feet is like right up onto him. It's like he, he's not even shoulder width. So it's like his 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 fundamentals is different. It's, it's different for for a guy who's really gonna be that at cornerback. Okay, and uh, also Shaman Mantel Mantel uh, the tight end. He transferred. I don't know. I don't know what went on with him either. I don't know if. He thought he was going to get uh, enough playing time or they weren't throwing him the ball or he didn't just didn't fit in with the scheme that they got going on. But they still got uh, Small and Morgan Pearson who moved to tight end. And I've seen a couple of films on them. So they're uh, small. they looking good in practice so far. There you go. There you go. Uh, I mean, Barton Lonely, pretty much good, man. Whenever, whenever you got competition, yeah, man, you just gotta step the game up when uh when Coach Brian give you an opportunity. And then they still got this tight end that coming coming in from Ohio State. So I don't know, man. man I thought he's a pretty much a blocking tight end from Ohio State. Um Bart Bart Lonely pretty much said it the day before the guy transferred. I mean, he was saying the guy inconsistent, he can't get the contested catches. He he's a big guy, but he wasn't consistent. And even doing what Michael Harris was doing. So even though he was big, they were like, they're not going to waste no pass on a guy just because he out there. They're to throw it to all them 100 receivers that they have. So if you're going to be getting the ball as a tight end, they're going to they're gonna make sure you know how to catch. And his catching has not been that good. And, and I mean, and, but those guys, like you said, those guys who they moved over there seems to be showing more. He must yeah. be right on the ball. But see, those yeah, guys. Yeah. Pearson was really good at, at, at receiving tight end in high school. Boy, he got some good hands, man. They moved him to linebacker. See I saying? know. Yeah, so, but I'm saying he he's really an athlete, but he just not don't have the height that he had. But Pearson really right. was good. And the same thing with Smalls. Smalls was a good tight end. These guys are not experimenting at tight end. They did it before at a high, high at a decent level. Okay. You know, they just converted down. You know, to another position in high school. I mean, in college. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. they probably showing them out over there. Yeah, man, like I say, uh they kinda look good in uh in films that I don't saw. And also, uh man, what really shocked me was Savion Washington. Uh he started uh last year, but he had he got injured, but did good, like I said before, uh the first three games of the season and when he got that injury, I thought he had not got healthy during his off season. And since uh you got they brought in Tyler Brown, Jordan Seaton, and Tyler Johnson, Caleb Benson, and Justin Myers. I thought that would with along with David Connor and him, that would be a solid rotation for the offensive line. But I don't know what happened. Like I say, maybe the competition got to him and he saw that he wasn't gonna be able to start like he did last year. And one thing about this transfer portal, man, you need somewhere to go. These guys that at least could have wait to the spring practice game to get filmed so they can carry that with them, but they hit the transfer portal anyway. So you got know, coaches out there, and before you go, but you got coaches out there saying, "Now, if you coming from Colorado and they struggled last year at the offensive line, 
and you can't beat none of those guys out. How y'all gonna help me? And like Coach Prime said today, the transfer portal now is really they battling for baggers. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Savion probably know he can go to San Diego or, or yeah. where uh wherever his offensive line coach went. I think they what did he go to Oregon State or something? What what um the, the um the uh, offense coordinator, the offensive line coordinator. Coach. Line coach, he didn't go with Sean Lewis. He went so no, he didn't go to him. I think it was Oregon State. Yeah, he might can go up there, and plus they already had a lineman go up to Oregon State, so he probably go to Oregon State up there with um, it's not BB. Um, who was our center last year? I know he he uh -huh. he went to Oregon State up there with him. Um, I forget his name, black guy. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean it's, he came with those guys. They left. He should have went on and left with them. Why act like he was going to stay? He didn't have no real connection with Coach Prime. He came and joined with the guys who left. So I think. So you really thought day, he was going to be great? You really thought he was going to leave? Yeah, I mean, he should have left. He should have been gone. He should have left when they left, like the rest of the guys who came in with him. They already wow. gone. He the only one left. So I mean, I he I, but he did good though. He did good when you first started off. You don't think he could have stayed there to be? I oh, he just didn't want to, man. Either way, either way, he's gonna be backing up somebody unless he go to San Diego State, they might give him a shot. Uh, he's gonna be backing up. Everybody gotta realize when they go to another program and those guys are already down in the spring and you coming in late, you gotta learn their concepts, and yeah. you're not that dumb, you're gonna you're gonna um you automatically backing up people. So I know he probably feel he wasn't going to outdo Benson because Benson is showing out. Benson is throwing people around like a grown man. <laughs> he throwing them around like a rabbit dog, man. <laughs> he, 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 awesome. he, just he got that dog, dog man. Whatever the guy on Longest Yard, that tall got his clothes around. Yeah. Yeah. So I he wasn't going to outdo Benson. And, but he was, you know. Benson needs somebody to, to back up. I mean, somebody to. That's what I'm saying. He's going to need somebody. Anything can help on the office line. They 300 pounds, man. You got a watch down there on the front front line. You can get your ankle twisted. Anything can happen. And another thing, David Connor, he did pretty good last year. I didn't know he was gone, but I mean, he was going to back up seating. So that's another backup thing. So going forward, towards the offensive line. They, how many office line you think he's gonna need out of this transport for? They're gonna need at least five. Ooh, five. five. Maybe two. three. Greg, you said five. I mean, because he just lost two. He was gonna need, you know. I know you three. I know you say three because he lost two and everybody's might need one more line. You gotta think about it. Like, we don't know who else is gonna hit. And true. I don't know, man. I'm looking at them running little drills, and I'm like, okay, the other 77 looking decent. The, what's they his are. name? Green. The uh, both yep. seven seven good. Mayors, I don't know. Mayors, I don't know. That that guard, I don't know. I don't know what it's he, gonna turn out to be. He, they, they. I they think it's gonna be it. Tyler Brown at that guard, man. But, but Tyler Brown, where's Tyler Johnson? That's what I'm wanting. I, I haven't. Seen I haven't him. seen him. I, I haven't seen him yet or what? But um, I think they need to get another center. You think they need another center? They got three. They got your Kira Walker. They got this white guy. And they got uh Tyler uh Hank Brown. You smart Hank Solistics and they Cleveland. And Matt's Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. One of them that one of them Hank Hank Zelensky is, is competing with um Yakira Walker. Both of them are a little light in the rear. They getting pushed around. I mean Hank Zelensky is probably doing better than Yakira. He but is. They, well, he running with the one. Around, they pushing him around. He got he needed good another 20 30 pounds on him. Wow. He needs some more weight on him. And he young. Hey, Greg, he they him. in the big but Greg, look, do you think they really need that weight in the Big 12? They ain't in the SEC. They're in the Big 12, Greg. We just gonna say it like this. The way they're looking <laughs> right now, either our line is, is like super dominant, or either they either deep, which probably so because shoot, I saw uh Barnes going to get that hamburger. I'm like, ooh. Oh, oh yeah, I saw that too. You saw oh yeah, yeah, two. yeah. Number yeah. two. Number yeah. Like, oh, I didn't realize you that big. Then you that dude was big, man. man. Yeah, we got some huge SEC defensive line. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I say, I think Coach Prime. Now some of them guys get that transfer for the, on their own, but some of them 
I think Coach Ryan got rid of him. And the reason why, he know he got some more people coming, bro. Well, we was running out of scholarships before them boys hit that portal. You know he got – I think he got some dogs coming. This dude from Arkansas, number 72, I've been seeing his name circle on social media. He scheduled his last visit with Coach Ryan. And he was a – Huh? Oh, you talking about that defensive tackle? No, offensive line, that number 72. From Arkansas. Yeah. I, I got it now. We have to move my ears out the way. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, he a big dude. He big dude, man. That dude, big. he made a fat. He made he made all SEC. Yeah, we need strong guards because we can't have that push up the middle. Where they pushing up up that middle? Hey, we got East Coast. We got East Coast Kale in the uh, chat. Uh, I ain't worried about who we lost. Look at Houston. They got 25 players in the transfer portal. Everybody's feeling. Uh, I agree with him. Like you said about that, like, it's a lot of people getting uh. In that fans for important people just uh publicizing Deion Sanders because even you with Coach Prime or Yen, ain't no in between, and I'm with it. And I think I think they're gonna be all right. I think they're gonna be all right. But like I say, yeah. he got to get him some offensive linemen and defensive linemen for this rotation so they can be healthy because we got a long season coming up, man. You don't never know who's gonna get injured. You still don't know who else might leave. And the players just got to have a good mindset, man. And the parents need to stay out of it. They uh, friends need to stay out of it. Uh, the friends on the team need to stay out of it. If you're going there to compete and trying to get a starting position, bro, you got to be on your game, man. Concentrate on yourself. It's just you, man. You got to work on yourself, man. You got to go to class. You can't be late for me. You can't. You got to watch films. You just got to go out there and compete, compete man. So uh, I want to say hello to Miss Shirley. Thank you for tuning in. Underground Media said he got all summer to put on weight. O-line, Miss Selma Johnson, how you doing? O-line to be much tougher. They need They need one. They will, right they on, be watch Either you ride or down or you jump it in out. You right. So what, great. I mean, Shaliski, I don't know if he can put on that counterweight in, in this short period of time. I think he'd probably. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's too late for that. Yeah, it's too late for that. Yeah, I it's too late for that. I think, I think that he's a, uh, he's a little light. He's a little light. I think the biggest thing need to be, need a need a big lineman, a big center who can take on, take that, that pressure up the middle. I don't need nobody back paddling in it from center. They be bat power, right? Bat right. power, right? Should do that. We don't need that push up the middle. That's why I say they bring some guards in to help out. They need. I mean, that if they have to, then I mean, shoot, uh, you don't get no bigger than. Yeah, I mean, if they get this number seventy two, you might get move Joy Cena in there, boy. No, I mean seventy two probably gonna be a guard. I, I mean, I don't know who you're talking about, but we need. We definitely need some guards. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send you the information, man. I'm gonna send you the information that I, I saw online. But uh, it's, a lot out here it's crazy. Huh? I mean, it's, it's it's a lot. It's more out there than what people think. It's a lot of people in the portal right now. Are oh, gonna be um, some more people that go? Don't come. Yeah, it's it's. I I don't know how they can maintain this this portal because the way these boys moving around out here, and it, it be and it don't always be slouches. It be people who are playing and they like, just leave. The play the coaches don't yeah. even know. Yeah. So uh, now. The running back, Alton McCaskill. Now, I know everybody kept saying that uh, he was injured last year and he wasn't healthy. Man, and that's true. But I really thought this dude was going to be the bell cow running back. And I heard his uh, dad and some people on Twitter were saying what all the stuff was saying that he didn't want to share. He didn't want to. He didn't want to share the ball with anyone. He wanted to be that main running back. Now, me personally, that Greg. And I heard your take on this uh, last year. You, I mean, uh, last week you said they need many, many running backs as they can because it's going to be a long season. Me, I'm just old school, I guess. I just want that number one running back and let him have that rock 20 to 24 times a game. Now, I know problem that one's going to have with Coach Prime. That's just my opinion. And and uh, I'm going to let you go and have whoever come in Whoever win that start, let him be the bell cow. And whoever come in second, let him be the bagger. All this 
five carries for you, seven carries for you, seven carries for you. And on uh online today, on I think on Well Off Media, I heard, man, Coach Klein don't bump oh, Charlie O, oh, the white guy, he don't bump him up to number two. He's running with the number twos now. And that dude, that freshman, Michael Welch, he took it going, man, shoot. It's going to be hard to keep him off the field. But uh, so what do you think about the uh, Adam, Adam McCaskill? And also to the chat, what y'all think about McCaskill leaving? Uh, let me know what y'all say. Underground media said Michael showing up. They couldn't deny him carrying. Elijah Watson said, hello, brother Watson, Greg. How y'all doing? We doing good. How you doing? So what y'all think? East Coast Cal. East Coast Cal. What you think about McCaskill leaving? Talk to me, Greg. What you think about I mean, he, you say he had, he's, he's not. He looking good. Be, he didn't look good in practice. You bill to be to get no twenty carries. He don't have a bill for it. I mean, he's real lean. Um, he definitely would have to split with at least one other back, and you know, for just endurance to endure and also to have a different style of run. Because I mean, he lean and light. You know, Ooh. he's not. McCaskill is not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. He's not even two fifteen, and he's tall. So really, yeah. he's like a two hundred pound running back, and he's not. He's he's just not built for that kind of kind of running. You don't um, think? What he was doing in Houston before he got I think, he, I think he was a little bigger, and um, and also. I don't know if he – he just made big runs. I don't think necessarily he was getting no 25, 30 carries a game. I just think okay. he was just, just good good yet, good, you know. I mean, he's getting yards at the carry. So, I, but I think that the thing about him leaving, yeah, it's a surprise because his reason for leaving, he's going to have to deal with wherever he go. He's just right. not going to walk in. He's going to go to Division Two or something. He's just not going to yep. walk in nobody or nothing. Because still got yeah, they still got to compete. They still got to compete. Yeah. I think the injury is kind of hurt. Uh, two, two, five. Jay said the injury. Yeah, I believe that too. I believe that that injury kind of scan Coach Prime too. Don't know if he can hold up. Uh, something, something happened. I don't know. I ain't gonna. I mean, I good now. I mean, his injury is is he. I mean, he was cutting and all that now, but I just think. I don't know. The momentum is just not there. The momentum not there. He got to build it up. So like Coach Prime say, what are we losing? We losing hey, potential. He sure said that. Yeah, he so said that. He so said that. What are we losing? So what do you think about Charlie O going to number two? I don't know. I mean, Charlie, Charlie. Like he's just doing that now to, because he just been practicing good. Coach Prime just want to recognize him. He's been practicing good. He been practicing good last year, and they say he was doing it the year before. They got there. He just yeah. everybody gonna overlook him. I guess he said, "I'm gonna see what he can do." Yeah. Why this one more opportunity here? He been looking yeah. good. He has been looking good. Now, now on the uh, defensive side, you satisfied with the defensive line, or you think they need to add some more pieces? I mean, you probably want to add if you can. I mean, they out there, you can get them. I mean, just for depth, because again, injuries gonna happen. I don't know. I haven't seen Shadoze lately, so you know, I know Savion Savion Wilkinson is out. So we always, when we, we really pay attention, somebody's always out or in a yellow jersey. I mean, you out there hitting and you spraying and stuff, and you you twisting stuff. You, I mean, you're gonna need that depth. So defensive line, I don't know the depth like that. Cause I, I know they lost Harris and Edge Rusher. They lost Wallace, and we haven't heard much. Wallace really could, probably wasn't out there unless I didn't notice his number. Wallace, I, I, man, I had heard that out him, man. Yeah, and they say he hit the portal, so he probably been gone. So that was a, another guy who's supposed to be kind of in the tackle position from that came from last year. So they can easily go get one or two more tackles because they got plenty of edge rushers. Yeah, yeah, they got yeah. I heard they're finna bring. I think Coach Brown said he got another head rush finna come in. All but, of them uh, haven't got me. The freshman haven't got Yeah, I know. Me. Right, right. And you got uh Hattie Ross said, What about Wilkerson? And 
he had over a thousand yards. That Jackson State looked like Coach Ryan got all about him. <laughs> and uh, no, he, he hurt. He hurt. He been. I think oh, he, he is. But I, I oh, okay, think I didn't know that. Coach Prime mentioned it. He said he runs just like Welch, which is true. Welch got a little more torque to him, but Wilkinson is real twitchy. And okay. the ground. they both run hard. And was uh, so Wilkinson to sneak up. He snuck up at Jackson State. They they overlooked him at Jackson State. They did. And, and guess what happened? Somebody got hurt. Right. Uh, right. Name um, this um, JV JD Martin, fast fast running back. And then they had a, a backup running back who was a walk on, and he got a scholarship that year, kind of like Charlie. And um, wow. yeah, I think he came from like Miles or something like that. And he wrote real hard, just like Charlie. He got a scholarship, and Wilkinson stepped in because JD Martin got hurt. And that was supposed okay. to be he's supposed to be the Alton McCaskill, the fast guy. Yeah, you know, he got injured, kind of similar to how Alto did, and that's how Wilkinson got his spot. Well, he didn't okay. tear. Alto, but he he was out. So right. Wilson, if he get his opportunity, he will take advantage of it. Yeah, but like I say, man, you know, I'm glad when this transfer portal is over. Whoever gonna leave, let them go on and dip. And who's gonna stay, let them go on and stay. And whoever gonna come, let them go on and come. And let's get this. And let's go on and get this team. Coach Ryan, let's Coach Ryan go on and get this team like he wanted. And let's go on and put the work in. And let's get ready for the season. Because uh, that Kamada McClain, man, I got tired of hearing about Kamada McClain. <laughs> man, every time you go on Twitter, somebody said, where's Kamada McClain? Where, why he ain't playing? But he, had, but he got a good, strong fan base. I had to give him that. But I'm so glad it's over because it really was kind of a distraction uh, for the team anyway. You got to ask a question about Kamada McClain and all that. And now I hope he goes somewhere. Where he can be used, and where he uh, and the people gonna hold him accountable there, and not just him, all of them, that they can be uh, they can have get his mindset right, man. You know, cause you know it's nine, eighteen to nineteen. You moving from Florida, you got to go all the way up to Colorado. You never know who he who he's hanging out with, man. You never know what kind of advice, cause you know he got some money for coming up there. He was a five star. Cornerback, you know, so ain't no telling what he was doing up there, man. I just wish him the best. I hope he turn his life around. I hope he, hope he go to a school where he can play, man. Hmm. But uh, also uh, we got East Coast Carousel. All these names in Colorado transfer Porter. Have y'all noticed that none of those names are Bishop Thomas? Could he be staying? Mm. That's a good question. That what you think? I mean, Bishop Tom is off the team, so I mean, they already put him off. That was that was the, that's been done. Somebody said at the bottom there I said he done. He has an NCAA violation. Whatever he did, it was it was serious enough for him to hide and get him. Is it, is you think he still? You something. think he still on campus? He'll probably finish the school year. I don't know, but whatever okay. he did, it, it wasn't what? good. It, he did right. something serious. Right. Man, I hate that. I hate that. But uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight to uh, we two Georgia boys bringing y'all content from Coach Prime and Colorado. And we want to thank all of you for participating in the chat. And if you don't mind, hit the like button and also subscribe to both our channels if you haven't. And hit that bell notification and let everybody know that it'll let everybody know whenever we drop a video or uh, we go live. Uh, Greg, go ahead and uh, let the uh, chat know about your business. Then we'll jump back into Colorado. Well, I mean, outside of being Greg, I'm just Greg said, and I'm a I'm a real estate financing guy. Help people get their their homes, uh, investment homes. Um, license right here in Georgia and Florida, but I can help anybody outside of Georgia and Florida. When you come to your investment properties, you're looking to make some some real estate moves go ahead and let me know uh you can text me 404-902-3042 or you can go to greg the mlo.com okay uh east coast care said uh but why isn't his name in the portal 
That's a good question, East Coast Kev. I don't know. That's a good question. You talking about Bishop? Bishop Tom? I mean, he might not be going in the portal. Uh, he might be just done. I mean, they say it's a violation. He can't. He violation. You can't go nowhere. They say NCAA violation. I'm looking to that. Oh, okay. Somebody said, hey, "What part of Georgia?" Well, they said, "What part of Georgia?" I mean, I'm in the, the metro Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, we both in the metro Atlanta area. That's what you asked me. Said Troy Bly. That's what we asked. Oh, uh, Troy Bly said, "What part of Georgia?" Hey, I'm in the metro Atlanta area, sir. But uh, okay, yeah. Warren Sapp, man, this dude is, uh, man, <laughs> Greg, I'll tell you, Greg, listen to Greg and the chat, too. Warren Sapp got that defense line fired up, and it's kind of putting putting uh, Coach Bill Loho. Man, it's going to be some challenges in the battle there, man. I'll tell you, man, Loho ain't going to let his offensive lineman off the hook and let uh, Coach uh, Sapp show him up, man. What do you think about uh, Warren Sapp being on the part of uh, this uh, coaching staff? It's, I mean, come on. It's just like trying to coach basketball against Jordan or somebody. It's like the skill set is different. You know, the, the mindset is, is – he, he, and then he's so smooth with it. He's just a – he just a uh, – I always thought he was real wiry, but he's actually been kind of real cool with it and um, how he coached. So it's like, how you had to do is do that. It ain't just going to be miles ahead of most teams. I mean, it's got, it got a show. He's just, he's just not a regular defensive line coach. It has to come out somewhere. Like, if I'm right. really, really good at what I do, it's just going – and you listening to me, you're going to have an advantage. And that's what we're kind of seeing. That D-line is showing some advantages. A lot of, a lot of like, he's he's taking them boys to the next level, especially old He really is. Yeah. Especially McNeil. Boy, he just got boy. He got a non quick stop, man. He just won't stop, man. This dude got a skills on top of it now, so it's like he's gonna be a whole nother animal because he, he is. So yeah, a lot of these guys gonna be way better. Barnes looking good, you know. Chidozi gonna look good. All these boys gonna look good, you know. And these guys, he working with the tackles primarily. He working with those guys. I mean, he he dealing with edge rush in the ends a little bit, but he's primarily in with them with the tackles. Yeah. So it's, it's, be interesting how they how they just do damage on the inside. And that's gonna don't think that it ain't no tackles trying to get over here. Now they say uh, I know they are. for real. Since they added Warren Sapp, oh yeah, you'll be a fool not to. Right. right. So it turns out to him. Now and it, it's it's gonna be a problem. If see you tackles on the deep put like this, you know, we already put it out there. Even with a bad offensive line, we saw what Shudu can do. So if the offensive line is a little better, which they are, clearly Coach Prime saying it, they ain't got to be world beaters. But if that defense is able to keep that score low, it's going to be hard to beat Colorado. It's going to be hard, Greg. I've been saying it too, Greg. Yeah. It's going to be hard, Greg. It's going to be rough. They keep that thing down in the 20s, the 17s. Man, they're going to go through that big 12, man, like it ain't nothing. I'm telling you. It's hard to beat them, and it's gonna be based off them tackles, because them tackles yeah. is the one who's controlling the run. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and not gonna even people get mad or whatever, but I still don't like the way them linebackers playing pickaboo. I don't either. Me either. I, I, I'm watching them like a hawk because I played the position. I am. Too. I don't like none of them. Step, and the first step they do is duck their head in the hole, like they put their head in, the, and the ball go all the way over there. Why are you not reading? Why are you just automatically – you're not blitzing. They still doing that. I don't know why they still let them do that. And that ain't even called gap control. That ain't your job just to plug your head in the hole. The defensive line already trying to scrape. You know, they already trying – you just plugging in the hole. Now we got three people in one hole. Hit that crap go. I'm watching Bentley still do that. I'm they sorry. did that last year, man. Hmm. I don't like none of their linebackers so far. The one that I don't think – they do that. They gotta get go. Go Prime said he gotta get him at least two linebackers. He said he's gonna he gonna get two linebackers out of his transfer for him. I just right. hope they they got to be better than I ain't called no name, but they got to be better than I the one they man. got now. I'm not here to dog him out. I can have a conversation with him. And I ain't trying to act like I'm super coach, but doggone it, that's fundamental. You just don't run your unless you blitz. That's you say that's my gap. I'm blitzing. But you just ducking your head down in there like that. And it's like, 
what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Why I think it's gonna be a problem. I think it's gonna be a problem if they don't address the linebacker position. I think that's, that's gonna hold them back. It's defense lineman right there, and you just duck your head, and then the ball bounce over there. And now it's a lane right there. You supposed to fill in the gaps as a, as a linebacker. You just, I just like what you all saying. Read and react. Right. That's what you're supposed to do as a linebacker. Read and react. And they didn't do that last year, and they couldn't cover the slant right. I just couldn't understand that. That's why I keep saying they got to address that linebacker position in this transfer portal. And if they don't, they got to give somebody else a chance other than Trevor Woods. And I, don't, I ain't going to call no more names. I just, they just need a better linebacker group this, uh, this year. Maybe those uh, linebackers that's on the two, on that run with the twos, better than the ones that run with the ones that I haven't seen on film. Because uh, I don't got to do name. Well, you don't lost a couple of linebackers. I don't know if Gant's still there, but um, I guess he's still there. But we lost uh, Kennedy and you know other guys. Yeah. So like, you got to get the two more linebackers, two or three. You have to. Maybe Coach Hart don't know what. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what's going on that linebacker group, man. It's don't just say, don't say nothing negative. Like, what are you talking about? These, these are, these are. This is talking football. What are you talking about? These ain't no women. We we talking about women as fans. Like, yeah, what is, I know. Who that at? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not dogging them out. You're not wishing harm on nobody. You don't want your team to lose because you're talking about it. You're talking about it because that's the reality. And maybe yeah. they do need to hear that, and, and they do be hearing stuff. But you, you're gonna get sensitive now. You're gonna go go put on the chili the outfit. Because what we're saying is, <laughs> we're we talking hey. the truth. We're not, talking yeah, about, yeah. we're not gossiping about you because we're saying it. And so you hear it, you hear. But you're right. saying something that you actually need to do. We're not telling lies on you. We're not saying you can't do it. You only gonna prove you can do it or not. But I'm saying, the ball say hut, and the first thing you do. Let me tell you something, B. Watts. I'm listening. I'm listening. As a linebacker, the dumbest uh -huh. thing you can do, especially as an undersized linebacker, is make it easy for the lineman to block you. Why are you step running back. to the lineman? You're not even making him. You're not even making him come to get you. At least when you make his sloop for itself come and get you, you can put a move on because you should be quicker than him. You should be faster than him. You're playing to his advantage by making him not even have to move. So you, he say, hut, and you just run down in the hole and duck your head and, and wrestle with him. <laughs> Why did you go down there to let the mummy touch you? You, you, you make him come get you. Now he's gonna create a bigger lane. He can't see what's behind him, so you can do like that and just to throw him off. The ball could be going out. He don't know. He think you're right into the ball. I just do it all the time. I, I, yeah. I just climb it just to make him think the back, run back way over here. I'm gonna get. It. I ain't gonna touch me. He's not gonna right. touch me. So why would I go down into the line and take away my advantage, my quickness, and my speed and just fall in his lap? That's what they do. They just run down in the hole and do this and do that and act like they're trying to get to the ball. The ball was never in that hole. Why? I why, I, I would literally watch Bentley run to the hole. I said, I'm going to watch him. But he just ran straight to the hole. The ball was going out here. The ball never was coming to that hole. And he they just ran up and down. He made that lane. That lane was empty because that's what Bentley's supposed to be. That that bat side backer maybe would have came what Bentley is. They're supposed to scrape. You scrape like a tight rider. Y'all moving on the same accord. You could jump down in a hole. You creating traffic, actually, because you, yeah. you're getting in the way of that lineman who is trying to come over. You in his way. The lineman right. is trying to scrape you. The other backer may come down and clip over you if you get pushed back into the lane because you never supposed to bend there. You're supposed to bend outside. So yeah. that bad my linebacker struggling. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's coaching or what. All I know is I'm yeah, watching. Maybe it's the linebacker coach or just get Ray Lewis in there. He might have a point, man. But uh, they got to be. Man, if they can't stop the run this year, they defeat the purpose. I don't like when everybody kept blaming the line. Like, that was so weak. Like, we, I, I watched the game. The linebacker is the second freaking level. You're not the first level, so it don't matter what the – you can't see the holes clear. Yes, you can. If you, you First of all, you shouldn't be on top of the lineman back. You should have a bird's eye view. 
you should be at least five to seven yards off the ball. So True. you can see, you can see the backfield and you can see the line. If you're right on his back, you can't see nothing. You all in the crowd doing that. Stay your butt back so you can see. That's why you're back there. If you align and get your butt on the line, you you shouldn't hike the ball and just jump on the line. Like you shouldn't even be up there until the ball, until you know where the ball is going. Then you hit the gap. You just don't jump up there. You can't scrape on the line because there's people next to you and they're gonna block you. Like that that tackle is next to you, and he's getting blocked, and you try to shift there, you're gonna run into him. That's why your behind is on the second level. So none of that 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 wash will get in your way. That's called that getting caught in the wash. You go down yeah. there, it's traffic down there. True. That's not where you're supposed to be at. You as a second level person, you're supposed to be able to see, okay, my lineman got blocked. I need to feel here. Or I see the running back here. I need to go there. You gotta have a vision. You gotta be able to see. You can't see that in the line. And that's what they're doing. They're just jumping down in the line on the snap. They're not reading at all. At all. They they might look up and go in the right hole, or they might just be crowded or somebody bail them out. But as a mm-hmm. linebacker, yeah. you're you're like yeah. yeah, I don't. So what? So uh, I think uh, Shiloh gonna perform this year. I think they ought to move Shiloh more closer to the line of strength. Cause Shiloh gonna Shiloh gonna bring that fumble to you. Well, so if he get, if he get, if he get his hands on, you, he gonna bring you down. All of them do that. Hodge will come up and hit you. Uh, Who? Uh, Cooper, Cooper will come up and hit you. Hodge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Craig uh, come up. And hit you. He need that big. He'll come up and hit you. I believe Travis J will come up and hit you. Oh, he got the sign. He got right. the sign to do it. Get him a shot at linebacker, man. That, I, I better have him at linebacker. He said that in the offseason. And everybody talking about what you talking about. He too small. He 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 but he got the he's got the bill for it. He can put on 10, 15 pounds and be what everybody else doing. Cause you gotta look at it. He got he got a lower, he got a big lower body. Who and, you talking about? Travis J. Travis J. Oh yeah, Travis J. Oh yeah, I told you that, Greg. Yeah. I like I, Travis I said, J. I said in the offseason, I said they need to move Travis J. and stop my linebacker. Uh, and they move stop my to safety. But even the safety he's gonna be playing is gonna be like outside linebacker. Yeah, that's all that nickel is. In 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 a, in a, in a three four, that's all that nickel is. Yeah, a, a, a linebacker. linebacker, another outside linebacker. True, true. Like I say, I I would love to see that man. Than to see the linebacker they got now. So Shiloh ain't scared to hit Travis J. I did he transfer from Florida State. I think he yeah. did. Yeah, I think he got he got injured. He got injured last year and then couldn't hardly get the field because I really thought he was gonna be that other cornerback of Travis Hunter. But yeah, yeah. uh he got injured and tried to rush back and it didn't work out that way up on him. But this year he's not a cornerback because you see is how he how he built. He, he's built more stocky and he's not lean yeah. and like that, he's an inside the box guy. That's why I said he could easily be, you know, where he had knuckle outside backer because his even how he moved, he bounced. You see how he covered that guy in Oregon? He wasn't yeah. he was bouncing, he's bouncy. That's how you cover as a linebacker. You kind of bounce, you know, you don't stride, and, and, and he's not slow, he just how he moves, he doesn't move like a cornerback at this right. point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking for big things from uh Travis Hunter this year, man. I think he, I think he's, he, I think he's gonna come back better this year. I heard Coach Prime said today he gonna be playing in the nickel. He gonna they be playing him all everywhere on the defense side of the ball. So I want to see how this gonna turn out. Travis gonna be Travis. I think Tra- Travis that dude, him. man. They outsmarting you because they say typical teams are put their best player, so they just putting themselves in a position where they can do that. If they put their best player in the slot and try to hide, you know, they'll try to hide their best receiver from Travis and put him in the slot and try to match him up on linebackers. So and then they like, well, we'll just move Travis with him and we'll we'll move Hodge out. So they just giving themselves the ability to do that. Well, if they if they move that receiver, he can go with them. So they're just giving him a feel for it. But I think at the end of the day, Travis is gonna be Travis. He's gonna be yeah. consistent because he focused. Yes, yeah, he like, is, man. That's why I can understand. If Kamadi was looking at Travis to see how he moved, why he and didn't get in no trouble and put in the work, and even Jordan Seaton, why he couldn't get it right? That's what I can understand. Kamadi, if he wanted Kamadi, to move that, 
if he wanted to be the opposite side cornerback of Travis Hunt, and also he said he wanted to play wide receivers and go both ways, so why he just couldn't link up with Travis? Maybe that didn't have the same mindset. No. I don't know. Kamani is a uh, do things his way. You really look yeah. at he kind of passive aggressive. He's not like vocal with it. He kind of like that that solid stubborn person you talk to, and he's like, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he ain't probably ain't finna argue with you. Probably gonna say something on his bro, but he's gonna be passive aggressive with it. You gonna say, don't do this, and he gonna don't wear your earrings. I'm gonna wear them anyway. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just gonna wear them because he probably been doing that. You see, that come from a lot of he way he raised by his mom. Now, we don't been around enough to know what guys are like who raised by their mama. It depends on the type of mama. Your mama hardcore, you be this one. But if your mama kind of baby a little bit, they they don't True. they don't take the risk well. So he True. he's saying like they kind of do. They let him do what he want to do. His mama probably you know he probably not a bad kid, but at the same time he not used to being told what to do. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, Thanks you do it gonna have a MVP season this year. What's that? The quarterback should do it. Should do it same. You think he's gonna have a MVP this year? A better than he did last year? I mean he should be better than last year. But well, the way he's throwing that ball, way he throwing that ball in practice, man, it coming out quicker. He on target, he accurate, man. They give him too much time, he's gonna get him alive because that boy sleep with that ball. <laughs> he sure is, man. Look like he don't got better to do, man. Foul with that ball. <laughs> <laughs> he take that bad boy everywhere he go, man. <laughs> he be slaying that line. You're right, Miss Daniel. Yeah, he he slaying that thing, man. That bad boy took it to the ball. airport, took it across yeah. the sea with him, took it to bed with him, out to eat they with him. Every time you see him, <laughs> boy, he, boy, I just like, I like, man, I. Last year, he was the best pocket passer quarterback in college football. Now, at first when he went to Jackson State, great. I didn't think he going. I didn't think he was all that. But once I saw him and kept seeing him, him repeating himself, how after he was, I said, I used to tell my brother, this boy's real dude. Deion Prime Time got something right him. He ain't playing no daddy ball. He ain't playing no daddy ball like they said. This boy can play. He was too advanced for the sweat. I mean, from day one, he was too. I mean, you can tell he'd been trained. And most of them guys yeah. ain't trained like that. It's like it's like taking your kid to go up against somebody in private school as far as academics. Like they just don't have a whole nother level of training. It, may, it ain't this their athletic ability. It's just that clearly his dad hasn't invested in him. And you saw that from day one at Jackson State. Like his his idea, his concepts, his his training, his 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 approach. He was already Shadur. As a freshman, was better than a lot of people. That's why he, he's a great. He's better than a lot of people. They junior senior year as a freshman. Yeah, and his number yeah. shows. So wow. it's like when he came over here, it's like, oh, this guy here, this is his junior year, but he already playing like he don't already go to the pros because that's how he trains. So this year he just gonna be a grown man. He's gonna get to see grown. We're gonna call him grown. <laughs> yeah, like oh, I man. said, the offense got a man. They they got the potential to score at least thirty points a game, man. Mm -hmm. It's gonna oh, be thirty. Boy. It's gonna be upper thirties and forties. They've been doing it last year in the beginning. They as long as they get the guards, as long as them guards don't get pushed in this lap, the tackles can push him around. He can step. Yeah, they can the push him around. Yeah, it's gonna that be between center, that guard and that center. Yeah. yeah, that's what I say. All they gotta do, I'm gonna tell you. All they, I'm telling they you, they need to find some lineman weight three hundred thirty pounds. Just put a bit there. Big center. <laughs> yeah, big center. That ain't gonna get pushed on like a sumo wrestler. Go get one of them uh, Hawaiians or whatever they want. Yeah, the Hawaiians. Yeah. Yeah. Build the low to the ground. Yeah. On the low to the ground. And some guards who don't get pushed back in his lap. And it's a wrap. Because the defense are already showing you what they're gonna do. Oh, yeah. They got, boy, they, man, that defense, man. they gonna get that the Barnes, quarterback. A lot of people have been sleeping on Barnes. Barnes is looking good. Who? Smart Shadozy Barnes is looking good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, he's yeah. taking on double things like that. Ain't nothing, man. Yeah. Yeah. So That's why I said old, if he if he is Shadozy rotating in the middle. Oh, my god. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Like I said, Shadozy can take on two blockers. That ought to free up a linebacker to come up and make the title. If they ain't playing pickable. <laughs> but every time you see it in well-off media, they ain't nowhere near the ball. 
Pickaboo. Pickaboo. <laughs> <laughs> going high in the head of <laughs> what you say, bro? Oh, hell no, man. I'm not even looking at the ball. The ball all the way over there. I'm trying, coach. No, you don't get off the field. <laughs> you oh, are you You are already committed to this hole. The ball, you supposed to be scraping, going up parallel with the ball and taking the table. <laughs> you already playing pickleball up there with this line. The ball all the way over there. <laughs> yeah, I thought <laughs> Real, yeah, you got to kill some linebackers, man. You got to kill some linebackers, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. Colorado fans going to be mad at me. I don't want nobody to say anything negative. I don't know. what. Go get a mini skirt. What are you talking about? Go and put some pom-poms on. You tell me I can't say nothing. What are you talking about? I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Co-Prime do it. Co-Prime. I didn't feel like Co-Prime running around talking about his own players. They're mad at him. How in the world are you going to be a Coach Prime fan telling people what they can't say? He say all the wrong stuff. He say all the wrong stuff. <laughs> you know, don't say that. Don't say that no more. Don't say He say all the wrong stuff like an old granddaddy. <laughs> oh, you crazy, man. But, uh, so, uh, what about Carl? Uh, you, you been hearing anything from Carl Stanley? That, that was, I, I hope this thing ain't doing that mess again. It dropped off. But uh, yeah, Stop My um, was injured. So they, I guess he probably be coming back. He was injured. Hey, is he injured? Yeah, he was injured. I think he might have had off. He's so care. He's so care. Help me out. Is uh, Carter Stop him out empty? He got, um, he, I think he had an off season surgery or something. They, he oh, he did? Had, you know, whatever he had. And you know, he was playing injured last year. So I think they were saying he went on. I think oh, okay. that's what. I believe that, unless I'm getting confused with somebody else. Okay. Well, like I say, uh, what concerns you about Colorado going in uh, this year? What concerns you? What's your major concern? Uh, uh, my major concern is they better act like they better get some depth, and they better quit acting like – let me pop that again. They, they better yeah. act like they got some um, – some everybody not gonna start, so let's just leave that alone. Everybody nah. not gonna start. No, nah. so be a role player and like it, especially if you're your underclassman. Quit acting like everybody gotta be a superstar. Play your role. Right. They need to know how to be role players. Yeah, that's my biggest thing with them. Everybody think they're gonna be a star, be a role player. Yeah, it look like they uh coach Brown. He already don't say everybody gonna play, and the defense coordinator already say he gonna play everybody. He can on the defense side if they help. So it's not about who's gonna start or who's gonna finish. Who's gonna be on the field when it's count at the fourth quarter? When uh, when you your team up by three and you trying to stop them from getting in the field goal range, or if you got the lead, who gonna be on the who gonna be on that defensive side trying to stop the other team from scoring to taking the lead so you can continue to win the game? That's what I look for. Stars, I ain't worried about no stars. You know, for right now, yeah. they just need to compete and make each other better, be a better teammate. Well, it's clear. It's thing. clear. I said, you need old linemen. It's clear we need old linemen. I mean, not old linemen. Uh, definitely old linemen because you don't lost two. So you need at least three. But you yeah, definitely you got to get three. The, the linebackers, you need two, three linebackers. Yeah, you need and two linebackers. Yeah, they're, they're in the portal. We oh, they're they in there. They in there. So, they in there. They know they I know that. Play. I think he's gonna get to. I think he's gonna get to. I know. I, one think, came out yeah, I know if I can see it and we can see it. Coach Prime got to see he need linebacker. He got to. He just got to. I hope so. I believe it is. Hey, I, I, believe I don't it. like the way I know they be trying to be positive. Like I we oh, Trevor Woods is a dog. No, he's he not. He's not. He might be. Might be. I don't, it's, it's different kinds of dog though, because you got a Chihuahua dog. You got <laughs> well, you only think, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, you only think, man. I'm saying different kinds of dogs. Some of them small, some of them big. Some of them live in the house, some of them live outside. <laughs> Why you crazy, man? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, uh, but, uh, I don't like the team at Satan. Now, I like the team at Satan, special team, but middle linebacker. Man, you got to have speed to be able to go side to side 
and you got to be able to read read the offense, know what they're gonna be doing, and be able to attack that A gap, C gap, and uh he just got big to be physical, man. And I just didn't see it for them, man. I just didn't see it for Trevor Woods need to do. We need to have me and Trevor Woods need to work out together. Me and Trevor Woods need to get together. <laughs> do some cone drills. Do some cone drill. I'm, I'm gonna line up three cones. I'm gonna do old school like they do with me and linebacker. And I'm, I'm gonna get in them about how to read. Since he said he's smart, it shouldn't take me long to work with him about how to read. Because clearly he ain't doing it at practice. I'm gonna well, start uh, how to read. What you gotta say? He always round the ball, man. I said round the ball. He, he, he I really said he always round the ball. I no, said, no, oh, he don't come be around the ball. With that. No, they, they they said it wrong. He don't be around the ball. The ball be around him. See, he be playing pickaboo, and the ball just be running <laughs> around. <him. laughs> the ball be around him. You know, you know how they say they don't, crazy, know, the earth, they don't know if the earth going around the sun or the sun going around the earth. <laughs> Either you around the ball or the ball around you. Great, there's no lie, Greg. Me personally, when I watch well off meeting, I be exactly looking for the line. I ain't, I ain't so far, I haven't seen him make a tiger not one time. I'm being honest this year. You can't you I, can't tackle when you're playing patty cake. <laughs> the line, man. Man, you crazy, man. But you can't, you can't <laughs> I see I'm I see I'm about to get out this sudden, right? Yo, we got food back there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to play with the oh, well, you a Hey, Greg. <laughs> man, we got five more minutes, man. Check this out, Greg. How do you rate uh, the wide receiver group that Coach Prime has uh, put together? The wide receiver group. I think they they they, they overkill just like every other year. It, look at all them teams they lost to last year. They didn't have the, the room that wide receiver room called the road. We had too many receivers. That's why they were fighting each other in the locker room. So they was they had too many of them. They, I feel like I can play better than you. I'm faster than you. Like the wide receiver room don't need no more receivers. They got enough they receivers don't. for two teams. They do. Caleb Mathis out there throwing out. He could be on the field too anyway. He can hit the portal too, but he not. He, but he could. So I'm saying these are second team guys. They got plenty of receivers. That ain't. I think they got the best that. wide receivers in the conference and in college football. And they got four of them that ain't even got there. Yeah, exactly. and they can start on any SEC team. Cam McKay, Trey Long, Miller, Will Shepard, all them guys. Man, we straight right there. I don't. Never, not, they ain't gonna no uh, problem. Baby T.O., somebody said he need to move the tight end. That's a good idea. Be like uh, I think Shannon that. Yeah, Sharp. I seen somebody in chat say that too. Yeah, Shannon Sharp. Yeah. Be like Shannon Sharp. See, he like to lift weights. He big. Let him yeah. Shannon Sharp into him, and, and he can he can be a good little tight end. Yeah, they probably could. But uh, they already about two. They said, Wef, they said Webster has made plays at the linebacker. Now, I like him. Now he probably the only linebacker that I like. Webster. Well, we knew that when he came. He had the highest rating, and his film showed he don't play pickaboo. So we know he know how to scrape and go to the ball. The problem is you got to have somebody on the back side. If he's on the front side, somebody got him in the back side. He, if he going to the ball this way, the back side linebacker got to make sure nobody cut back. He can't be up there playing pickaboo and patty cake because that's a lane right there. So right. the linebackers got to move like a tight rider. They got to move like this in the court. One can't be up here, up here, and then you can't get back to help out. You're a second level for a reason. That means you catching everything to get through. The problem is you can't catch everything that's getting through when you in a hole that's irrelevant to the play. Like the ball over there, I need you over here, back side pursuit. So that ball cut back, you're there, but you can't. So that's why you see them weird runs where they, the, the front line will stop them. He'll cut back and go all the way to the other side of the field, like we seen with Robinson against uh, USC. When the defensive line do their job, and the linebackers, there's nowhere to need to be found. He cut back. It ain't nobody on the back side but the cornerback, and the, and the linebacker ain't there. So that's why I didn't like them blaming the linebackers. I mean, blaming the defensive line like that because it's like – It's linebacker. 
your job is to be the second layer behind them. So even if they don't do their job, you're supposed to bail them out, not the other way around. They're bailing you out because you ain't there to fill the hole. you lucky they tripped the guy up because you weren't going to be there anyway. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, what I've, my concern about Webster is on that slant route, he's a little bit too short. Well, that's what a slant at. But he's kind of short. You want the you want the short guy because it is high. The DB can get to it. The short rock, the the underneath is where the it's underneath. That's where he at. Yeah, the short guy's underneath. If he go up high, he got he, he got the look. Up, right? They run the slant, right? They run the slant, and he got to run back. The quarterback throw that ball right over here. If he got a six two or a six three wide receiver, but that's what I'm the talking passing about. Lane is not high. The passing lane is low on the slant. The passing okay. lane is right here. That's where you want it because you get up here. He can come over top. You throw it. So you want it here. So that's why the linebackers are supposed to be picking them off anyway. That's why like, Trevor Woods ain't picking all them, them slants off because you in the you in the He wasn't reading the right. He wasn't reading. He was saying, you know what he was doing? You know what he was doing? What? <laughs> you ain't doing that. Oh, boy. Hey, Terrell. You know. We are ones that you can give a fair assessment of the linebacker with bad D line play. <laughs> but uh look at that. Man, the, look at the D line that, really wasn't that bad. What do you call bad? They wasn't getting pushed to the linebacker, so you can't call them bad. Now, now the bishop them the nose guard was, but it wasn't interfering with the linebacker play. The linebacker play was interfering with themselves. It wasn't the really? defensive line that was getting pushed into their lane. The linebacker was committing to the wrong lane. So, so whether the offense, the defensive line was good or not, it it wouldn't help you because you're not even where the ball is going. It is not because they. Okay, some people say well, the defensive line not making clear lanes or whatever. I'm not saying they were perfect. You can't read. You know why you can't read? Because your behind is up that playing defensive line instead of being a linebacker. Stay your butt back. You will be able to see. Oh, that, that's a gap right there. Oh, and you can you can hit it, but you can't do that when you're up there playing patty cake. Well, you think? Do you think it was the kind of scheme that Charles Kelly were running that they couldn't get down? It, it was that's why scheme. I kept hearing. Yeah, I heard it was the scheme, but my eyes saw. The, we can't read. You can't read. <laughs> like like if if I give you a, a kindergarten book or a, a novel. If you can't read, you can't read. You see what I'm saying? Like, you may know a few letters in the kindergarten book because it's kindergarten, but the kindergarten book will expose you can't read. You might know one or two words. Now, the novel, you might not know none of the words because they're high-level words. But if you can't read, you can't read. So no matter what the scheme is, you got to bring the fundamentals to the table. I got to be able to read the run before I even run any scheme. If I don't know how to take the proper approach to the ball. My first step shouldn't be hut and Back. run to the line. You don't even know they pass on the run or that. You just run head first into the line. You're not blitzing. You're not blitzing because you, you wouldn't be doing all this. You will just go, huh. So you're not blitzing every play. You just, you just, you playing a uh, uh, guessing game. Like I'm guessing that's where the ball going. I hope it go there. But if it go over there, I'm screwed. You can't commit to a hole unless unless you read. That's your point. If you're not going to do that, just, just line up on the line and hit a gap. Why act like you're a linebacker? Just line up on the line and just run into the hole and everybody have a gap. But if you if you're gonna if you're gonna read, I need you to know how to read. Yeah. But uh let's look at the coaching staff. You think Coach Prime got a better coaching staff this year than did last year? I mean, I know you, I mean, you, you, got, you, got you, tail, but. you got a defensive line, you got an offensive line coach who, who, who high level. I mean, those are the biggest changes, and they going that's where you're gonna need that's where you need the biggest changes. Your biggest changes need to be at the offensive line blocking better and your defensive line getting the pressure. And then your coordinators gonna, gonna, gonna do the rest. But somebody gotta work with them boys on how to move, use their feet and their hands and get their mindset together. Before I run a play again, that's the fundamentals. I don't care about the playbook if you don't have the fundamentals. No, the scheme no. is relevant if you out there old land blocks. Yeah. 
Or you that's what I think. Uh, I think Phil Lomo and Warren Sapp uh, gonna take that coaching staff to another level. I think they gonna they really uh they really want to be there, and they know how to teach the fundamentals to the players or some things that they don't know or you know, missing from their game, which going to make them better. So well, I do, like you think they are better now? Cause somebody just, uh, he's saying that you don't have a fair assessment, a fair critique. So he's saying my critique ain't fair because we got a good line now, right? Yeah. We got we got a good good line. Line. Okay. But yeah, I'm still watching Bentley play pickaboo in this. So, <laughs> yeah. So, hey. so is my critique still not fair. I just watched it before we got on here. And I watched him say, Hut. I watched him do it. Hey. So that's what the new line. So, so, so we still going to blame the line? He's still doing the pickaboo. No, nah, it ain't the line. It's the linebackers, man. I'm saying, say it's not a fair critique. So, uh, do we got the same line or a better line now? Because I'm still seeing the same reading approach with a new line, with Barnes in there, with Chadoza in there. I'm still watching them run head first into a hole where the ball ain't. So who are we blaming now? <laughs> I, I, like I said, I played it. I played the position. So I know how to look. I know how to critique you regardless of who on the line. I'm looking at your first step. I'm looking at where the ball went there and you went there. The line, they had nothing to do with that. Your eyes yeah. did. Like I said, uh, they got, I think got either, either the, the star linebackers got to get better. Uh, they got to put the twos in there. Uh, Coach Brian got to hit that transfer portal and find some more linebackers. That's the only Juju way around. That Nobody said that about Juju last year. Juju didn't have no problem reading last year. He just had no, a problem off the field. Juju yeah. didn't want to say it was the bad off the defensive line. It didn't stop him. So why, why are we going to talk all this line stuff? It didn't stop Juju Mitchell. He stopped himself, but it didn't, the line didn't stop him from making tackles. Yeah. Uh yeah, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that about the linebacker position. But uh man, I'm gonna get ready to end the show. We want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Had a good uh discussion. Uh Greg, Greg, Greg here tonight, y'all. This thing up might go viral. <laughs> this thing up might go viral with that figure book. But uh we want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh you can watch me and Greg every Thursday night until he say he died of it. So uh the only thing I ask y'all to do, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, and make a comment. And we will appreciate you if you do. But uh Greg, uh, I appreciate you, bro. Uh look for I've always looked for on Thursday night to see to hear your uh, content. And uh I, I caught you a video. Uh I missed it Sunday. I was at church, but I caught it Tuesday night. Uh you always do a good take on Colorado. Keep up the good work, man. And once again, I appreciate you. And Hey man, I think we're gonna get better and get better. Get some more Georgia connection on him. We're gonna be all right. I give you the last word and we'll close it out, bro. I'm I'm a Colorado friend, but you ain't gonna tell me. I ain't, I'm gonna call out the pickaboo. I'm gonna call all of it out, and uh, that's why I said it. It ain't, ain't hot. And Greg said it, and I'm gonna keep saying it. And we're gonna enjoy watching these games. We're gonna. It is what it is. We're gonna tell the truth. But hey, we all for Colorado for the advancement of Coach Prime. We ain't no haters. We want to see them win as much as anybody else. But it is what it is. All right. Appreciate it, Greg. Once again, we thank y'all. Don't forget, Greg, tell them when they can check you out, man. Well, you know, we we on on Sundays live. Um, we, we have some other videos. Check out. We do inspiration, motivation on Sundays. And, you know, do a couple videos throughout the week and short. So just go ahead and subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Greg said it. Hit that bell notification so you can catch everything coming through. All right. Tell them about your business before you go, Greg. Well, all things real estate, go ahead and check me out. Greg, the MLO, G R E G T H E M L O dot com. If you have any questions, well, reach out and I'll help you the best I can. All right, that's the end of our show, gang. We appreciate y'all. Until next Thursday night, y'all be blessed. Make sure you tell a friend and a loved one that me and Greg will come to you uh, next Thursday night at 8 p.m. live, bringing you the best in content for Colorado and Coach Prime. Once again, thank y'all for tuning in. 
And always remember, you be good to God. God will be good to you. Until next time, y'all be blessed. All right, partner. Be easy, man. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I <ain't not. laughs> like crazy. Well, he got it tonight. <laughs> oh boy.